The November Monologue. Okay. Picture this. Picture this feeling for me. Picture this moment, this particular transition. My loneliness, or your loneliness, tastes like a vague explosion, like a distant firework, a heated wordlessness, fearless and instant, like a sudden flicker of the wind, or the mind, or the ocean, or the sea, or even so, the river. I wish I could tell you how this is, or why this is, or explain this nagging emotion or nagging feeling in descriptive detail, but this is perhaps the best sentence I can offer you. My loneliness tastes like a vague explosion, and maybe it is my solitude, or maybe it is this big gap, this stretched out pause that I've created for myself, or the current pause that already is, this self-isolation that tastes like a vague explosion. But I think it's my chosen solitude. I think it is my chosen friendship with myself. I don't know. But all I know is that this is the only way I can really describe it. At least for this particular turn of a corner. Or turn of a mind in my life. This phase of healing that I've been going through forever. This change of a self that continues on forever. But it's sometimes more obvious in certain seasons, and I think this is the season when it's very obvious. Sometimes you need to let go of the healing, because I think sometimes you cling on to the healing that has already taken place. It's over. It's like a slow, low turn. It's like a distant burn of something new. It's your calling or your heart that is speaking to you, something that is half-heartedly trying to break your solitude. Break your constant analyzing of past moments, past pains that you have been letting go of now. Something you have already moved on from. It feels like, it feels like you have moved on from this like 16 times, 50 times, 80, 83 times. I don't know. <laughs> you put an end to pain. A long time ago, but you didn't put an end to the analyzing and the reflecting. It keeps going. Can we ever really know when that part is past us too? When you have healed and when you have learned, but you still carry the instancy of this healing, this changing. I know that we change as humans forever, but maybe the explosion is somewhat vague because the sound of change is vague and the look of change is very blurry and the touch can sometimes be remarkably uncertain. Even when you laugh or cry or even when the wonders of death haunt you in the middle of a brutal daydream, all of your ocean-looking solitude is just broken into a thousand teardrops. Is that a sign of change or is that just some good old hint of something old that keeps coming back i don't know but this brand new moment this brand new step in your life is not always obvious but none of these teardrops connect to the huge winding stream of all of those life lessons or gain knowledge or vibrant burning experience anymore you are stuck in the aftermath of healing and you like it it's just that you can like it i can't like it it's nice to like your heart getting stronger and your soul getting bolder, but it's time to even move on from that now. Sometimes I wish I could illuminate this pause I've created for myself, where I'm here all alone at the age of 23 in one way. At least in my mind. Or maybe in general. I don't know, but can I pause this November and stay 23 forever? Can I pause this illicit desire to not just break my solitude, but break this whole phase of transition? I wish I could stay young forever. I think a lot of people do in the society that glorifies youth and paints this strange idea in their head that after the age of 40, everything good in this life is suddenly out of reach. I wish I could be 23 forever, sure, but I also want to be 28 one day. I want to be 34 and... 
at one point I want to be 29. I want to move forward. And I think we all want to stay stuck in comfort zones sometimes as well as we want to move forward. We can feel ourselves starting to move forward. But we get stuck in that feeling too. Maybe it sounds silly, but I think that happens because it is the reoccurring dilemma. Like, I wish I could pause this very moment, this very fall. I wish I could catch all of my empty gray voices as they drop dead to the ground once and for all. All of the moments that I have already squeezed out, all of the analyzing and all of the reflecting and all of the wondering, wandering, longing and hoping. At some point, you just have to drop it. Let go of the letting go, I guess, as silly as it might sound. All of our empty voices scattered in the wind, trustworthy but gone. Instead, I am knitting friendship bracelets to distant strangers, unknown lovers, and all of our indignant echoes, past pains. They are vanished now. I am now facing my fears in my own hometown. But I think that that part is over too, so I don't even know what I'm facing. I think the banjo strums softly in the background, a minor, delicate, bleak, but you go break my solitude and to you my future, the hardened darkness will lay down there. Beautiful, my unknown. I wish I could go places in the world, but I also wish I could go places with the world. Instant treasures, instant memories, all of them I collect with the future. Up on our high horse, the future and I, we own the world. We own the truths, like the back of our brains. The battleships will ship away with a glimpse of faith in the bleakness of a heated moment. And I will put all of the past pains and the past sorrows to sleep. I will drown the uncertainty of dusty wars. They shall open up, bring the future to an end. Open up a present moment instead, but not pause it and not rewind it, just breathe it. Just breathe it. And maybe at some point, all of our empty past voices are darkened in the wind, scattered blue.